You ready? <laughs> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the June 6, 2022 informal county commission meeting. Uh, we're going to call our meeting to order. We have a, a couple of presentations tonight and then a uh, update uh, from our trustees. I'm going to come to this microphone. <clears throat> This is one proclamation. It's going to a, a passel of people, uh, but I'm going to ask uh, Mr. Matt Lyle, Mr. Lane Lyle, uh, Mr. Charlie Faust, Miss Lorena, uh, Brad, uh, if y'all all just want to come on down and make this a family affair, that'll be fine. And, and as they're making their way down here, uh, before I get into the proclamation, I'll just... Uh, talk to you just a little bit about um, the reason these folks are here. Uh, right after I was elected, uh, there had already been an effort, really, uh, to create a downtown green space in, Clarks in downtown Clarksville. And uh, many of you on the county commission uh, were part of funding that. And uh, I can't thank you enough. I was down there Friday night. Uh, I saw one of our commissioners. I won't say who it was, but... Uh, I saw one of our commissioners down there, and I, I don't know, it's probably, it's probably 1,000, 1,500 people downtown uh, just enjoying a great concert. And, and the folks here, uh, Charlie, he won part of the design team, and Matt typically won part of the design team, but it was kind of Matt's idea, and Charlie, through the, through the uh, downtown district partnership, or what, DDP, uh, he kind of kept the initiative going. And fought several battles and uh, just kept on trudging along, would not take no as an answer. And so today we have this wonderful facility down here. And uh, obviously Lane and Brad were very much a part of it as well. So if I could, I'd like to read this proclamation. Whereas in 1989, Field of Dreams movie character Ray Kinsel Kinsella, played by Kevin Co Costner, heard a whispered voice that says, if you build it, they will come. And whereas our it is our downtown commons, a city block, green space, and event venue, which hosts a variety of events, including concerts, movies, athletic classes, and many partnered events with local, lo, with local nonprofits and others. And whereas building on it begins with a great design and a design team. Lyle Cook Martin Architects, along with Matt Lyle of Franklin Architect and Charlie Faust for his key role are credited with the Downtown Commons award-winning design. And whereas the Downtown Commons design received the single highest award given of excellence for its design in 2021 by the American Institute of Architects Chattanooga, and whereas the AIA jury comments reflected the Downtown Commons was a well-designed and inspiring public space made even more satisfying because it was created through the work of many hands. And whereas the downtown commons design received an honor, the highest award given from the American Institute of Architects, Middle Tennessee, Nashville chapter in 2020. And whereas the AIA jury noted the thoughtful, unique detailing of the roofs, the rainwater strategy, and the simple diagram as elements contributed to the decision to award this project with an honor award. And whereas exceptional work in design architecture demonstrates a combination of those qualities of talent, vision, and commitment, which deserve to be recognized. Now, therefore, I, Jim Durrett, Mayor of Montgomery County, Tennessee, and on behalf of the Board of County Commissioners, wish to extend our congratulations to Lyle Cook Martin Architects, along with Franklin Architects, for their award-winning design of the downtown commons. Gentlemen and ladies, thank y'all. Thank y'all so much. Yes, sir, I do, and thank you very much for your very kind comments, and, and I'll be extremely brief, um, but when we, when we were 
in the midst of the turmoil on this, uh, Richie Jones, who's the principal of Hodgson Douglas, the landscape architects in Nashville, who who sort of were the actual uh, contract with with the, uh, the county, uh, the the previous contract that they had tried to keep them from giving a presentation at First Presbyterian Church, and Richie said, "Matt, what am I supposed to do? I've got a contract with the city, and I'm being told I can't give the presentation." And I said, "Richie, there's a guy in the crowd." who's running for county mayor. He's gonna be there, and he, you need to impress him. <laughs> and this guy is the guy that picked it up and ran with it, and, and it's the whole reason that we are where we are today. This is one of the awards, and we wanted to give it to Jim, and um, one of the many awards that it's already won, and will continue to win awards, and design awards are great, but and they, they do mean a lot to us as practitioners, and they give great recognition to what I think everybody in this room, everybody in this community knows, which is the, that that space does so much to enliven this town and this county and the economy and make people believe in where we're going. Awesome. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Matt. Appreciate it. Man. Thank you. Thank Sorry. you so much. And uh, now, uh, if I could have Miss Martha Hendricks to please come to the podium. Where we celebrate one of our successes, now we celebrate uh, uh, just an employee that's done just invaluable work for Montgomery County. Uh, it's really, uh, it's kind of a sad day uh, for me but that's being selfish, uh, but it's a great day for Martha Hendricks. And um, I think today is your actual last day. Yeah. And so I'd like to read this proclamation uh, to Miss, for Miss Martha Hendricks. Uh, and I don't know if it's in here. Uh, I don't think it is, but I have to tell you all a story. Um, when I was a kid growing up at Ringo Mill, I used, the bookmobile used to come down to Ringo Mill all the time, and uh, uh, they actually had some uh, uh, books inside the office, and I guess local people would come down there and get it. I, I never got one. They were probably uh, a little bit too sophisticated books for me when I was that age, but I remember the bookmobile, and so I was talking to Martha about it, and, and the proclamation alludes to the fact that Martha... Um, uh, worked on the bookmobile, but she's the first person that ever took the bookmobile across the ferry at Cumberland City. And so that's an absolute first that Martha's done, I know. She told me that somebody else has done it since then, but uh, Martha was, she was the... Uh, she was the trailblazer, as far, for lack of a better word. So this is a proclamation uh, by the county mayor, whereas today we express our appreciation to Martha W. Hendricks and honor her for her career with the Clarksville Montgomery County Public Library. And whereas Martha Willis Hendricks was born in Germany while her father was stationed there in the military, she has one sister, two brothers, and a cat named Chansey. And whereas Martha has a Bachelor of Arts in Linguistics, a Bachelor of Fine Arts in Painting, and a Master of Library Science from the University of Tennessee, Knoxville. And whereas Martha began her career with Montgomery County on October 1, 2008, where she served as Assistant Director, Interim Director, and Director of the Public Library since 2011, for a total of 13 years. And whereas prior to Martha's years at the Clarksville Montgomery County Public Library, she worked at the Warriota Red River Regional Library as a library clerk and library associate, even working on a bookmobile. Martha has experienced library work from the bottom up for over 26 years. Whereas Martha was a recipient of the Tennessee Library Association Intellectual Freedom Award in April of 2019, 
And whereas Martha has been a champion of the Clarksville Montgomery County Public Library and has worked diligently to provide a multitude of essential library services to the citizens of our communities. And whereas we know Martha is looking forward to spending her free time painting, making and baking from scratch sourdough bread, traveling and spending time with family, family, she will certainly be missed by her friends and coworkers. Now, therefore, I, Jim Durrett, Mayor of Montgomery County, Tennessee, and on behalf of the citizens of this community, do hereby express our sincere appreciation to Martha Hendricks for her loyalty to Clarksville Montgomery County Public Library. And Martha, we wish you nothing but happiness and good health as you begin this new chapter in your life. God bless you and we love you, Martha. Okay, we have a, our hotel motel quarterly update from our trustee, Miss Wiggins. Good evening. Good evening, Mayor, and this honorable body of county commissioners. We are here before you once again for our quarterly review of our hotel motel audits. As you know, the purpose of this is to make sure that the hotels and motels who are operating in Montgomery County and Clarksville are reporting all of their revenues, calculated properly, and to make sure that our office is collecting the hotel motel occupancy tax in a timely manner. These audits are performed in accordance with the Private Act of 1979, which also requires that the trustee report to you on a quarterly basis. We have our auditor here. Uh, the two auditors that um, oversee this process are Ben Carroll and Elizabeth Carmichael from Stone, Rudolph & Henry. So I'll turn it over to Mr. Carroll. Good evening. So during the most recent uh, quarter that we tested, we selected 10 hotels and motels to be tested. Uh, nine of those were actually tested. One of them, we were unable to obtain the information um, by our cutoff date. And so we have carried over that hotel to the following quarter. Um, in total, there was $172.54 of overpayments and $100.22 of underpayments. Um, all those discrepancies were due to um, errors in the exempt sales calculations, which con we continually to review um, each quarter. Um, and then we also had one hotel that had not submitted the most recent um, occupancy tax report, um, and that was as of our report date of 518. I don't know, they may have submitted it by now, if Ms. Wiggins can update you on that. But that's our report for the most recent quarter. Any questions? Any questions of Mr. Carroll? Thank you, Ben. Thank you. And so, as you can see, uh, we have already mailed out letters to make sure that we are um, receiving what is due to us. Um, five of the hotels having no findings, and then we have one uh, hotel that is underpaid when we roll out the numbers. And of course, we had three hotels who overpaid. We do not issue checks for overpayment. We allow credit in the following month. We have no outstanding uh, balances that are owed to us. They have all been collected. And as usual, we always show you our historical collections because that's something you're interested in. If you'll look at where we are in 2022, as of May, we're at $1.7 million in occupancy tax. And when you look at 2000, uh, 2020 and 2021, we're a little over the halfway mark. And so we're seeing a rebound in our hotel uh, motel stays in Montgomery County. The last part of this is we know that we have short-term rentals in town, and initially when I took office, we were manually looking for those short-term rentals and collecting and enforcing the payment of those, and gener generally, Governor Lee <laughs> signed into law a bill, uh, a law that said that they must report it to the Department of Revenue, and then it's sent back through our office, just like the sales tax. So I wanted to show you where we are with that. Since uh, January, we received the first monies about two months later, so that was in March. But as you can see, in 2021, we collected over a little bit over $166,000. And as of 2022, and not even halfway through the year, we're at 106000 
And lastly, uh, people like to know how, how are these funds uh, allocated? 25% to the City of Clarksville's general fund, 50% to our tourism promotion fund, and 25% to Montgomery County, to our general fund. Mayor, that concludes our report. Thank you, Ms. Wiggins. Any questions? Thank you, ma'am. All right, next on our agenda is our uh, zoning resolutions and public hearing. We'll hear uh, both uh, cases from Mr. Tyndall and then we'll go into our public hearing. Uh, our first application is CZ 10 2022 application of I, Jeff, I, I, I'm not even going to try to say the name because I don't want to do anybody. Uh, do, can you say it? Uh, we call him Dr. Suni. Dr. Suni? Yes. Uh, okay, I, I'm going to do the same. Application to Dr. Suni from R1 to R3. <clears throat> Mr. Tyndall. Thank you, Mayor. Good evening, County Commission. Pleasure to be here tonight. Uh, this request is from R1 to R3. It is one acre. Uh, it's a portion of the tax map listed there. Uh, there's a previous zoning case where the C5 frontage was zoned C5 uh, from R1 within the last year on this piece of property. Uh, if you've been out there, there is a building under construction on the C5 portion. The request is to rezone the back portion to R3. <clears throat> um, this is in County Commission District 15. Uh, the applicant statement is to extend the existing zoning and provide for a townhome development. Uh, it does have three previous zoning cases, one from 2006, two from 2020, uh, and then now. It's in the urban growth boundary, which would allow for R3. Uh, there's the building un under construction this month. Uh, there's a church to the right, and this is looking from the church parking lot. To the left, you can see the back end of that construction, and there are some townhouses on the other side of this property as well. <clears throat> Uh, and this is more to the rear of the property. It's a very deep property. They're not requesting the whole depth, just the next acre behind. Uh, and I believe this is Sheffield Woods looking back toward the property. There's a pretty heavy tree line between it and the subject property. We did not receive any department comments or concerns except for the school system comments on their capacities at the schools listed. In the county with R3 and one acre, you can build up to a quadplex, so they can't get anything more or less unless they subdivide it. And with the way that the C5 is in the front, I think they'll have a very hard time subdividing this into more than one parcel. So we're gonna say that you're looking at four townhouse units on this one acre. Staff recommends approval. The proposed zoning request is consistent with the land use plan. The proposed R3, 2, 3, and 4 family residential district is now out of character with the surrounding uses and is an extension of the established R3 to the east and adequate infrastructure serves the site. No adverse environmental issues were identified. The Planning Commission also recommended approval. Any questions of Mr. Tyndall on CZ 10 2022? Commissioner Albert, Jerry. How they get access to the property? Is the current building that's being constructed up there in the front now? It is, but they have left enough space for a driveway next to it. Um, it can stay as one parcel. So you'll have a, both a commercial building and a residential building on the same parcel, just using the same driveway that you would for the doctor's office. Something you probably see in the city more uh, than the, in the county, but. It's narrow and a deep property. So unless they were going to be able to subdivide off that driveway and re-subdivide in the, in the back, I, I don't think they're gonna build a road. It'll just be a driveway behind the doctor's office and the retail center that is under construction uh, here. Uh, I think, yeah, we took it from the other angle, but to the left side of this building, there's a little more room between the property line and the building to get uh, behind it towards the back of the property. It just seems like a lot of congested area with looks like there's three different businesses or even maybe four going that existing building being built and then a driveway for townhomes in the back. Whew. Thank you. Any any other questions of Mr. Tyndall? The back zone to R1 now, Jeff? Uh, yes, the R1 goes all the way down until okay. you see that other yeah, color yeah, R1. I, I see that now. Mm -hmm. I see that now. Okay, no more questions for Mr. Tyndall? Oh, excuse me, uh, Commissioner Joe Smith. 
hang on, I think I see it now. So this parcel is going to be three different property classifications of zoning. It's going to be C5, yes. R3, and R1 if this is approved. And the back, probably about two acres remaining in the back of it for R1. Okay. It's kind of landlocked back there, though, by what they're doing in front of it. Well, I mean, even this parcel's landlocked, technically, other than a shared drive. Mm -hmm. But you wouldn't be able to do a shared drive back for more than one house back there on the remaining R1. So they won't be able to go any further back onto that parcel. So they're not going to come back in two years and say, we want R3 back there. They could. They could ask for some more. But R3 only allows up to four on one parcel, four units on one parcel. So they'd have to be able to subdivide it. And with our regulations right now, this can't be subdivided any further. Okay. Commissioner Harper. Thank you, Mayor. A quick question, Jeff. How, how large is the R1 portion? I think the other map, there we go. So there's a portion off of uh, Quail Hollow Road toward the back, so it doesn't go all the way back, as I mentioned, uh, but you see there's about another, if this block right here is an acre, you have about two more acres behind it until you get to the other property. So conceivably with R1, they could put eight, eight houses back there? If you got a road in access, but the way they've um, used the frontage on 41A, you wouldn't be able to get a road through there to get access to eight lots in the back. I, I have to say, it's obviously in my district, but I'm a little confused as the access here. It, it doesn't sound to me as if <sighs> Perhaps a little more planning needs to be taking place on it, I th personally. Yeah, I, I don't see the engineers. I don't know if the applicant is here tonight to answer that question, but I might be able to get you a sketch from the engineer before the next meeting to maybe make a little more sense of this. Yeah, thank you. Any other questions regarding CZ-10? All right, next is CZ-11-2022, application at DGTF Clark Enterprises, LLC, from C5, 8, and AG to R4, C5. Thank you, Mayor, um, and bear with me, County Commission, because I know this one looks a little odd. This is a property that's currently zoned C5 and AG and R4, requesting to go to R4 and C5, and it is an extension of those classifications. Uh, this property is located on Guthrie Highway and Spring Creek Village Road, right near Boolean Drive and International Boulevard. And I think the next picture will really show you what's going on. So in essence, what you're doing is there was an R4 case that rezoned the back there meant a couple years ago, two or three years ago. It left the middle ag because they didn't know what they wanted to do with it yet. <clears throat> and the front was uh, has been C5. This application is going to swap a little bit of that right side where you see the blue hatching that's going to go to c5 on the left side of the c5 that's going to become r4 and the rest of the greens become r4 so when it's completed this property will be r4 in the back c5 in the front uh, this is in county commission district 19 it's in the urban growth boundary uh, here it is on the left as you approach spring creek village parkway it does include the RV park and the two or three homes that are located in the back there. Um, they're not being rezoned, but it's part of the larger parcel. This is Spring Creek Village Parkway. The property's on the left. This is looking back out of Spring Creek Village Parkway. Uh, property's on the right. And looking back toward town. Comments and concerns, the County Highway Supervisor will require a traffic study prior to any site plan or subdivision. And there were no other comments or concerns. Uh, just for the record, the existing R4 is 50.6 acres. After the rezoning, they'll pick up 16 acres to 66.05. And the C5 prior to the rezoning is 21.8 acres. And afterward, they'll have 15.56 acres of C5. Historical estimates would put this, uh, just this portion at 185 units increase. 
that means 792 total units if all the R4 is developed. Uh, a lot of that, as you know, towards the north part of this property is in the floodplain uh, between Google and this property. Uh, staff does recommend approval. The proposed request is consistent with the land use plan. The request is an extension of the R4 and C5 districts. The adopted land use opinion map indicates multifamily residential and commercial uses for the exit or exit four interchange and adequate infrastructure will serve the site. No adverse environmental issues were identified at this time. The planning commission also recommended approval. Any questions of Mr. Tyndall for CZ 11 2022? Commissioner Garland Johnson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Honestly, this kind of sounds like a mess. Uh, it, it sounded bad several years ago when we passed the R4 in the back, but now it's kind of, I don't know, it's almost got a circus quality. Uh, have you heard anything from the IDB in reference to this uh, rezoning? We, did, we didn't get any comments back from the IDB for or against this proposal. Because, okay. I mean, um, having citizens around the industrial complex is a problem and with 792 units that's a lot of people in the industrial area that just breeds complaints it it with the with the investment that the county and the city and our industrial partners and just the citizens of montgomery county have put into that industrial complex to have that put in jeopardy because someone wants to put a bunch of apartments in there just kind of sounds a bit off kilter just just throwing that out there so thank you any, any other questions regarding CZ 11 all right Jeff thank you good job all right we will now go into public hearing to hear public comments regarding our two zoning cases I would ask those or let me describe our process would be that uh, we will call on someone to speak in favor of an application uh, we'll call that three times allow for three speakers uh, we'll also call anyone uh, to speak in opposition uh, to the zoning case and we'll allow three of those as well we would ask uh, everyone that wants to make a comment to please come to the microphone where mr tyndall was uh, standing just a minute ago, uh, identify yourself, let us know what your name and where you live, and um, if you would, keep your comments to three minutes. The microphone will actually cut off after three minutes. Uh, if you're not through, we'll let you wrap up your conversation, but we ask you to, to be respectful of our rule. So uh, first we have uh, CZ10 2022 application to Dr. Suni. Uh, from R1 to R3, is there anyone in the audience that would like to speak on behalf of this application? Anyone to speak on behalf of CZ10? Seeing no one, is there anyone in the audience that would like to speak in opposition to CZ10? Anyone to speak in opposition? Our next case is CZ 11 2022 application at DGTF Clark Enterprises LLC from C5 AG to R4 C5. Anyone in the audience to speak on behalf of this application? Good evening, Mr. Goodwin. Good evening, commissioners. My name is Chris Goodman. I'm a civil engineer for the project. Um, I won't try to break down the rezoning as well as Mr. Tyndall did. Um, I will say that there's a significant portion of the northern property that's in the Spring Creek floodplain. It's going to remain the Spring Creek Village Campground, and there won't be any apartments built in that. So you're probably talking about 15, 16 acres of floodplain that will not ever have any apartments built in it. So I'd be happy to answer any questions you may have. Any questions of Chris? Commissioner Leverett. Yes, sir. Um, have you received any word from our uh, highway supervisor as to the uh, traffic study? Are you going to wait to see if that's going to come out? Or are you, do you have any concern about that? No. Uh, the traffic study will be forthcoming when they do the site plan or preliminary plat, and there'll be one done then. They're going to be building some interior roads in this site. 
they'll be connecting to Guthrie Highway and Spring Creek at Ground Road. Commissioner Johnson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So now that the, the traffic has been brought up, uh, I understand that there is a proposal to con have a connecting road to Oakland going through that property and around behind the, well, basically through property that, that the person proposing this does not own. Is that true? There is something in the works for that, and I will gladly defer to Mr. Tyndall on that subject. Okay. So he knows a lot more about that than I do. So it's, it, it's an idea that came from the Planning Commission, and we're happy to work with him. Once we get through the public comment period, I'll let Mr. Tyndall come up and answer your question. Thank you. Any other questions uh, of of Chris? All right, thank you, sir. Anyone else in the audience to speak on behalf of CZ 11 2022? Anyone to speak on behalf? Anyone to speak in opposition to C CZ 11 2022? Anyone to speak in opposition? All right, we'll now close the public hearing. Mr. Tindall, if you don't mind, if you'd come up and ask uh, or maybe try to answer Commissioner uh, Johnson's question. Sure. Commissioner Johnson, you might want to repeat the question. Uh, I, I, get, I think okay. I get the gist of it. Uh, so just before COVID, uh, we were working with TDOT, and we actually had both mayors and the IDB director at the time sign off on what we called a corridor management agreement which would look at how do you handle access for different portions of state highways. We were just going to look at the portion from the exit four up to jo um, Jim Johnson Road on Guthrie. The next step was to look from there to the state line, but that's a whole nother mess, if you will, a lot narrower road, an unimproved road. The intent, the intent at the time was to avoid the northern portion of Guthrie Highway uh, to look like Wilma Rudolph Boulevard to the south. Uh, fewer curb cuts, more traffic uh, being dispersed through internal road systems or rear ridge roads. I said, can you imagine what it would look like if we had a road between Terminal Road and Needmore Road? Like how much traffic could be pulled off Wilma Rudolph every day? So we have a plan. I've been working with TDOT. Had a little hiccup in it, unfortunately. I need to talk to Mr. Harvey about that. But the intent was, and as you can see here off of Boolean Drive, which used to be Solar Parkway, there's two little stubs coming out to the, I guess, north and south or east and west. Uh, this plan intends to pick up where that would continue. So as properties develop on this side of the road between Oakland and here, they'll be expected to build a portion of that road as it goes through. And it may take many years. It could take 10 or 20 years as they all develop. But the plan was to put out this road. This applicant will be the first one likely to develop out here. They're actually gonna put a signal a loop road, a traffic circle, even internally to distribute the traffic so that we don't have five or six uh, driveways out there. We'll just have Spring Creek Village Parkway, their main entrance, and possibly one other. Um, that's a lot less you know, driveways per mile than Wilma Rudolph has. So that's the intent there. Um, again, over time as these properties, we anticipate these to develop over the time, whether it's in the county or maybe annexed into the city over time. But this is an area that's going to start growing. It has a good road. We want to keep it a good road, and we want to allow that truck traffic and worker traffic to get through uh, smoother than the other side of Wilma Rudolph Boulevard. Thank you for that, Mr. Tindall. I appreciate that. Um, the, the only drawback to that that I see, though, is if that could take 10 to 15 to 20 years, it's not going to take that long for these apartments to come in. So we still have the industrial traffic. We still have the, the deliveries. We have the employees. We have the traffic coming in from all of those towns in Kentucky, um, North Montgomery County, all coming through there to get into Clarksville. And that stretch of Guthrie Highway is still all they have for the next and then you add in the apartments that this proposes uh, for the next 10 to 15 years. I, I, I just fail to see that as a solution. It's, it's kind of, uh, you know, uh, you're adding the Band-Aid after the, after the wound is healed on that. So 
we like, well, I, I, y'all, excuse me, I'm going to interrupt you. I don't want y'all to get in a debate about oh. this road or not, but you you just asked Mr. Tindall about, about you'd heard something about it. I think he answered it in your response. And Jeff, I, okay. I, I think you're good because okay. I think Mr. Johnson's good. Any, anyone, uh, we're through with our public here, and I'm sorry. We're, we're going to move forward now. Uh, next is uh, our, a zoning resolution and abandonment. Uh, which does not require a public hearing. Uh, Jeff, thank you for putting that up there. It's a AB2 2022 resolution approving the vacation of unimproved road stub east of Monticello Trace and northeast of Taylor Hall Lane. Any questions regarding AB2 2022? All right. Thanks, Jeff. On to our resolutions. Resolution uh, 2261 is a resolution accepting the public improvements program and capital budget 2022-23 through 2026-27, compiled by the Montgomery by Montgomery County and approved by the Clarksville Montgomery County Regional Planning Commission. Any questions regarding 2261? Seeing none, that item is set for the consent agenda. Resolution 2262 is a resolution to add a deputy county historian, historian to assist in collecting and preserving local and state history. Any questions regarding 2262? Seeing none, that item is set for the consent agenda. 2263 resolution to amend the budgets of various funds for fiscal year 22 in certain areas of revenues and expenditures. Any questions regarding 2263? Jeff, do you have anything you want to add to that? I think you told me you may have one change. Yes, sir. There was a couple of changes on it. Um, under Parks and Rec, I believe it's on page 35 of your packet. I had to add $9,000 for the replacement of an HVAC unit at Woodlawn Park. And later on in the debt ser under the debt service um, items, just where we did our recent bond issue, just had to add those numbers, uh, those figures in that this past week, and all those numbers are highlighted in red that were added. So that's a change from what was from what seen the at the committee. budget committee? Yes, sir. That name's wrong, too, on that microphone, Skip. Okay, uh, any other questions on 2263? That item is set for the consent agenda. 2264 resolution of Montgomery County Board of Commissioners approving amendments to the CMCSS 2122 school budget. Any questions uh, regarding 2264? Seeing none, that item is set for the consent agenda as well. 2265 resolution of the County Commission of Montgomery County, Tennessee approving an economic impact plan for the Vulcan plant development area and adopting designated development area policies and procedures. Questions, Commissioner Leverett. Um, yes, I just want to let the commissioners know on page 81 of your packet, um, I'll, myself and um, in uh, cooperation with uh, city council person uh, Karen Reynolds and we work with the IDB we added some language in there for a affordable housing requirement as part of this uh, tax increment incentive program and so we just ask for you when you get a chance to look at paragraph 3.12 um, to see the uh, affordable housing requirement that's all thank you ma'am any other questions regarding 2265 that item is set for the consent agenda as well. 2266, resolu resolution of the County Commission of Montgomery County, Tennessee, authorizing art installation at Veterans Plaza. Any questions regarding 2266? That item is also set for the consent agenda. Resolution 2267. Resolution authorizing the purchase of turnout gear for Montgomery County Volunteer Fire Service using ARPA funds. Any questions regarding 2267? That item is also set for the consent agenda. Resolution 2268 is a resolution to ratify private chapter 
number 48, House Bill number 2892, Senate Bill number 2908 of the 112th General Assembly of the State of Tennessee relative to, to the Montgomery County General Sessions Court Judges Compensation. Any questions regarding 2268? Commissioner Gannon. That one, is that the one that requires a two-thirds vote? That is correct. Okay, that's it. So that item is not set for the consent agenda. All right, 2269 is a resolution to levy a tax rate in Montgomery County, Tennessee for the fiscal year beginning July 1, 2022. Any questions regarding 2269? Seeing none, uh, 22610, resolution making appropriations for the various funds, departments, institutions, offices, and agencies of Montgomery County, Tennessee for the fiscal year beginning July 1, 2022 and ending June 30, 2023 and approving the funding of the nonprofit charitable organizations in accordance with TCA 59109. Any questions regarding 22610? All right, commissioners now moving uh, on to our reports for approval. Uh, you'll see the commission minute, minutes uh, dated May 9th uh, will be on the consent agenda. County clerk's report, nominate committee. I know Commissioner Lewis was not here today. Commissioner Harper, I believe you chaired in his absence. Would you like to uh, submit the nominate committee nominations? You turn it on and they turn it off. <laughs> Jeff Thank Taylor's you. working it. Blame it on him. Thank you, sir. The nominating committee met tonight for the airport authority. Sammy Stewart was nominated to serve a three-year term with a term to expire June 2025. Charlie Kuhn was nominated to serve a five-year term with a term to expire June 2027. And FYI, the Airport Authority board membership terms were revised according to Resolution 21-8-10 to stagger terms so that all members do not expire at the same time. Thank you, Commissioner. And that will be entered as a motion. Thank you, Commissioner Harper. Uh, County Mayor nominations uh, and appointments. Commissioners, I'm going to uh, present those to you uh, next, uh, next Monday night, if you don't mind. We have some judicial commissioners. Uh, the Parks Committee, uh, ADA Oriented Establishment Board, Convention and Visitors Bureau, and Economic Development Council. And I will have those for you uh, next Monday night. Also, uh, your Highway Department first quarter 2022 road reports, uh, those will be part of the consent agenda. Next, we go to our uh, liaison committees, our school board liaison uh, for a report from the school board, Commissioner Gannon. Thank you, Mayor Durrett. Uh, school board's been very active this month, as you can imagine, with graduation and the, end, and the ending of the school year. They did not meet very often this month, which is per the norm. Things that they did discuss was the consolidation of the FY 2023 entitlement grant applications. They had a first reading on that. They discussed the student code conduct and they had a resolution of budget amendments, which is in your packet today. They also decided on the new director for the schools. They picked Ms. Jean Luna Vetter uh, as that new director, and the school board will have their formal meeting tomorrow night at 6 o'clock over on Gracie Avenue if you'd like to attend. Thank you very much. Thank you. Commissioner Gannon, will that, would they ratify the contract tomorrow night for the new director? Is, is that the plan? The contract is on the agenda for tomorrow night's meeting, yes, sir. Okay, 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 thank you. Any other questions of uh, school board liaison? Yeah, but your microphone's not on. I believe her start date is July the 5th. July 5th? Contract. July 5th, based on that contract that I, okay. I read it to today in the packet. Okay, thank you. Chris nodded his head, I believe you. All right. <laughs> How, Highway Commission, Commissioner Ray. Thank you, Mayor. Highway Commission uh, Committee met on, met on May 31st. The Dotsonville Bridge Project, the right-of-way should have been finished requirements 
at the end of last week so that job can get started. They have five job openings. They have two part-time employees working toward becoming full-time. We have two engineering interns working out with the crews to understand the system. They will move inside to the office later this summer to see how that process works. Uh, we went over zoning cases. We talked about the Highway 12 XL Road project, uh, the state right-of-way uh, uniform road law, and we went over budget overview, and they are working on mowing the right-of-ways right now throughout the county. We will meet again on June 27th. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Commissioner Ray. Commissioner, you see your reports filed, uh, the trustees report, are we required by the comptroller to report on the debt obligation, uh, building codes, uh, uh, school system quarterly construction report, and their quarterly finance report. I'm sure we'll have a few added uh, between now and uh, next Monday. Just a couple of announcements. Our VSO will be hosting the annual Flag Day ceremony on June 14th at the VFW Post 4895 on Hayes Street. Uh, bring any worn or damaged flag to the VSO office prior to June 14th, and they will take care of that. Uh, also, just uh, I want to point out the, the VSO. I know, I, unfortunately, I was out of town, but I know Andrew's here. Uh, I understand y'all had a great Memorial Day uh, celebration. Uh, didn't get to do one uh, because of COVID uh, the last couple of years, but just thank y'all for putting that together. And uh, I know that uh, the Asian Pacific Islander Heritage Month, uh, I know we see Michelle Lau nodding her head. Uh, I know we had a great event uh, down at Wilma Rudolph Boulevard. Again, I was out of town. I didn't get to come to it, but we just have so many great things uh, going on in county government. And just thanks to all of our employees, all of our department heads, and our elected officials for the job that they do uh, each and every day. And lastly, uh, Commissioner Lewis um, asks that you keep him and his wife, Miss Kathy, in your prayers. Uh, she lost her mom and uh, just ask that you keep them in your prayers. Uh, with no further business, we'll stand adjourned.